सो हेलो एवरी वन सो वेलकम टू दिस चैनल कॉल्ड एस वीटी अकेडमी दो न्यू टू दिस चैनल वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस चैनल एंड टूडे फ्रॉम दिस वीडियो ऑनवर्ड्स आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द सेशन रिलेटेड टू वन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट दैट इज यू ऑल माइट बी नोइंग इट नेटवर्क एनालिसिस ओके so this uh, these sessions are for, especially for those who are having backlogs and those who are uh, studying in third sem okay for both of those students i'm uh, creating this uh, playlist for network analysis all of the uh, concepts related to uh, all the modules i'm going to i'm trying going to cover within a short span of time okay so now without wasting much time let us start with the first module that is the name of the module itself is basic concepts of network analysis okay so just to give a brief basics about what and all are the uh, type of uh, problems networks cell uh, circuits what what and all would be there in this uh, network analysis subject i'm going to tell you in this session okay in brief just brushing up with some of the concepts which you have already done in pu 10th and uh, first year of uh, engineering okay so now let's start with the concept that is first module is basic concepts the first definition is related to electric network an electric network is any possible interconnection of electric circuit elements or branches okay so hope you might be knowing this this is one definition of electric network electric circuit electric circuit is a closed energized network a network not necessarily a circuit okay it is a closed energized network which which would be a, a, a surrounding around a closed loop where the current would be traveling in this loop okay this is one basic electric circuits and we are we are going to having some of the active and passive elements which i are going to discuss now then network analysis involves calculation of current through an element and voltage across any element okay this is simplified by using the various transformations okay these words you should be keeping in mind that is current through an element and voltage across an element network analysis involves the calculation of current through and voltage across any elements this is simplified by using the various transformations which are going to study in this subject okay next is the elements in electric circuits that are active elements okay and passive elements active elements consists of sources the sources are two main types of sources are one is a current source another one is a voltage source passive elements sources and sinks okay yeah sinks means passive components such as it consists of resistor capacitor inductors etc passive elements these elements of an electric circuit does not possess energy of their own they receive energy from sources or active elements for example already i have told you resistor capacitor inductors next is active elements these are the elements of electric circuit which possess energy of their own and can impact it to other elements of the circuit for example current and voltage sources which i have already told okay these basics you might be knowing i am just brushing up i am not explaining in brief okay yeah so now next is about voltage source it is a one which maintains constant terminal voltage irrespective of the value of the current flowing through it okay this is the definition of this voltage source the symbol is given as like this hope you might be knowing this either you can write it like this or like this or like this so this stands for ideal ac voltage source okay this is an ac source and these two are represented as dc source similarly practical dc source it's given through a resistor like this okay practically okay or an impedance okay this is called as impedance whenever we have this kind of box we can name it as impedance okay it is a kind of a resistor only okay and this equation which we covered would be coming from ohm's law which you already have discussed in your uh, uh, previous uh, uh, pu puc and all v equal to i into r okay this is the basic equation of ohm's law this would be coming into picture for this whole subject only okay you should be keeping this in mind next is current source it is a one which maintains constant current irrespective of terminal voltage ideal source this is uh, in this way the ideal current source is represented this is in the upward direction and here we have in the downward direction practical source it is given through a resistor in parallel okay in practical dc source it is a voltage source is given a resistor and voltage source would be in series and in a current source the volt uh, current source and resistors would be connected through parallel branches okay they won't never be they would be never be in the series next is very important independent sources this they might be asking for a sub question as for one or two marks that is the define independent sources 
A source whose current is constant and independent of all parameters of the circuit is called independent current source. Okay. In this, the current is constant and independent of all parameters. Okay. The current won't be dependent on any other passive or active elements in this case. These those current sources are called as independent current source. So now next concepts are very important. Dependent sources. So keep this in mind whenever I tell this dependent sources in the future modules of this network analysis. We are going to go through these dependent sources. Okay. First to go see the definitions. First is voltage controlled current source that is represented as VCCS or VCIS. Okay. Voltage controlled current source. The current supplied by the current source depends on the voltage across other branch in the circuit. Okay. This is the symbol. Uh, it, uh, all, all the dependent sources are uh, uh, represented through one diamond and here in this we have one current source here it is a, an arrow you know that whenever we have arrow head we, we can say that it's a current source voltage control voltage is controlling this current source so that's why in this you should be writing k into v of x where v of x is the voltage similarly current control current source it is represented as cccs or icis okay it's one and the same the current supplied by the current source depends on the current through some other branch in the circuit okay this is the symbol here on diamond shape again this is one current source so an arrow k into ix where this ix stands for current these two are the dependent current sources similarly we have dependent voltage sources that is voltage controlled voltage source vcvs the voltage supplied by voltage source depends on the voltage across some other branch in the circuit okay this is the definition of this vcvs symbol uh, diamond inside we have written plus minus so we know that voltage sources are represented like this outside again plus minus because voltage is controlling this voltage source so that's why k into v of x along with this symbol similarly we have current controlled voltage source or ccvs or icvs it's one and the same the voltage supplied by voltage source depends on current through some other branch in the circuit so this is the symbol here voltage uh, source and current is controlling this voltage so keep these all four definitions in mind okay pause the video and refer it so now next co uh, concept that is classification of networks this is a sure question okay very important mark it as very important they might be asking this for uh, six marks in the exam also okay because uh, this question has been asked previously in uh, previous uh, all the schemes so keep that in mind very important classifications of networks Network is classified based on its behavior and characteristics. So first classification is linear network. A network with parameters which are always constant with respect to of with respect to of change in the time, voltage and temperature is called as a linear network. Next type is non-linear network. A network in which parameters changes and varies with with respect to change in time, voltage and temperature etc. Okay. Those networks are called as non-linear network. A uh, basic difference between linear and non-linear is they are always constant with respect of change in uh, they uh, they dependent on they are dependent on the change in time, voltage, and uh, temperature. And here non-linear network are not dependent. Next is unilateral network. Circuit behavior is dependent on the direction of current to various elements. Here the the circuit behavior is dependent on the direction of current. Okay, the, the, those networks are called as unilateral network. Next is bilateral network. Circuit characteristics and behavior is same irrespective of change of direction of current to various elements. So this is called as bilateral network. Lumped network. Network in which it is physically separable. Resistor, capacitor, inductor are called as lumped networks. Okay. So whatever we are discussing in this module that those all those networks are this basically that is lumped networks which consists of resistor capacitor inductor in a closed path where we need to find the values of currents voltages etc okay those networks are called as lumped networks next is distributed network a network in which inductor resistor and capacitor cannot be electrically separable and are isolated as separate elements are called as distributed network okay they are not connected together they are separately connected and they are distributed with respect to the uh, voltage and current sources okay so these were the brief classifications of network here uh, they are mainly six times uh, i have written so you can copy those down this is a short question guys so please note it down so now let next uh, let's brush up with uh, which you already know that is resistors in series and resistors in parallel okay 
Yeah. So first let's discuss resistors in series. In resistors in series, voltage varies and current remains constant. Okay. In this way, resistors are connected in series. This I have already discussed. I'm just brushing it up to you guys because these concepts you should be knowing whenever you are we are solving the uh, complex circuits. Okay. And here uh, along to, uh, through that resistances, these are the voltage sources V1, V2, V3. And it is connected through one closed loop and that closed loop path and this is the current flowing through this closed path and it is represented as I. And we have one common voltage source for all these uh, uh, resistances that is Vs. Here Vs is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 because this is in one closed loop and these all three voltage sources will be getting added up. Okay. Therefore, since V is equal to I into R, which we already know due to Ohm's law, so Vs we can uh, write it as I R equivalent. Okay, this EQ stands for equivalent. Okay, that is equal to I into R equivalent means that since these are in series, whenever the resistors are in series, we know that we should add them, right? So that's why I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3 or I R equivalent is equal to take common I outside R1 plus R2 plus R3. Cancel I from both the sides. So our R equivalent equation would be for three resistances R1 plus R2 plus R3. Similarly for n number of resistances we have R1 plus R2 up to Rn. Okay. This is the R equivalent. Resistors in series. Next resistors in parallel. Here the current varies along with the voltage. So in this way resistors would be connected through three separate branches here. Three resistances would be connected through three separate branches and they are connected in parallel. Okay. And these currents here I1, I2, I3 are called as branch currents and those all currents would be coming from this common current through this circuit I. Okay. That is I is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Again V equal to I into R due to Ohm's law. So we can write also we can write I is equal to V by R. Okay. So that's why what we would be getting Vs divided by R equivalent that is Vs by R1, Vs by R2, Vs by R3. Again Vs is common here. Take that outside. Vs and 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. So Vs, Vs gets cancelled. We would be left with 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Okay. Further, if you want to solve this further, take the LCM and this is the final R equivalent we get for in case of parallel resistances. Okay. You can, this way, these concepts have already discussed. Okay. These are the basics. Still, I'm just recalling it to you guys. So now let's see one simple problem. Okay. Which uh, this is one simple circuit where we should be finding the equivalent resistance between these two nodes A and B. Okay, shown in the figure. Okay, this is one complex circuit here. Here one ohm is given. Whenever we have these kind of circuits, right? First we should be checking for the branch where we can reduce the part. We should try be trying to reduce the uh, this kind of circuit step by step. Okay. So here I've written see one simple example. This question here case one consider this part here now first that is try to reduce this part you know that these three are in separate branches and these three are in parallel so whenever three resistances are, uh, resistances are in parallel we have the equation right so that's why put this equation name these resistances as r1 r2 r3 substitute that is 1 by 3 1 by 4 1 by 4 since the values are 3 ohm 4 ohm 4 ohm then solve it and you would be getting r equivalent as 1.2 ohm so that's why this whole thing is there right this would be uh, exchanged by these three resistances would be now equal to this one single resistance so that's why this whole branch would be going and here in this form this would be reduced okay so here in we had three resistances in parallel followed by a single resistance that is 1.2 ohm okay this again now the circuit is simplified now so now again we should be considering this part that is this part how we can reduce this part is we can see that we have three separate branches but in two of the branches we have two resistances in series so we can add them that is 2 plus 1.2 would be 3.2 5 ohm plus 6 ohm would be 11 ohm okay if we simplify and write this what we would be getting this would be simplified by this form that is this would be 2 plus 1.2 3.2 5 ohm plus 6 ohm 11, 11 ohm then 7 ohm as it is then after that we can see that these three would in, are in parallel again apply the parallel condition then find solve and R equivalent resistance we would be getting as 1.83 ohm. Finally, we have one ohm outside, right? That along with this in series, then finally we should be adding them. So that's why you would be getting a final R equivalent resistance between the two terminals A and B as 2.83 ohms. Okay. So hope this is clear. These were some of the basics which I've just brushed up. 
so that's all for this session guys keep uh, supporting our channel like this channel guys so i've taken this initiative to uh, do the subject network analysis uh, which would be helping you guys okay so that's all like share subscribe to our channel thank you